Hello, I am students. Uh, this video is all of the solutions to the uh, review for your county formative. The first part of your review, um, we'll have another review for tomorrow, and then the formative will be on day five. So this video uh, talks through the solutions to each of the problems. And again, what I would do is uh, work on the problems you know, on paper, on your own, if you get stuck, not sure what to do, check the answer key and then or come to this video and find the problem on this video and uh, see how I did it. Uh, I'll be available at SOAR both um, uh, all day, uh, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. So you can come see me for help if you need it. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem. So the instructions for these problems are to simplify or solve. And you only can solve uh, an equation if there is an equal sign or an inequality like these problems here. These don't have an equal sign or an inequality, so the best you can do is simplify them. Um, so these first two we're going to simplify. And when there's parentheses, usually I want to try to do some sort of distributive property. Here I'm really distributing the minus. So this is just going to be 4 minus 3x. Now I'm subtracting a minus 2. That's two negatives. So then that's going to give me a positive 2. Now I can't combine the 4, the 3, and the 2. I can only combine the 4 and the 2 because they're like terms. The minus 3x is kind of on its own because there's no other term with x in it. So, of course, 4 plus 2 is 6. And I have minus 3x, and we are done. All right, for this next one, I have uh, two terms with a single x in it, so I can combine those. And I have two numbers that I can put together. So the 3x and the 2x added to give me 5x and the plus 7 and the minus 8 combined to give me a minus 1. So be careful on the sign with this particular problem. Alright, so now we have an equation and it's a looks like I have two terms with x on the right hand side so I can uh, combine those first. You always want to simplify if you can before you start solving. So I have 2.2x plus 1.3x, and that's going to give me 3.5x, and I still have 10.5 on the left-hand side. This is a one-step equation. My operation is multiplication, so to undo that 3.5 to find out what x is, I'm going to divide by 3.5 and divide by 3.5 and when I do that I get x equal to 3. All right here's a simple one again we have a one-step equation essentially we have to get x by itself we have a minus 2 times that x so we need to divide by a negative 2 to undo it Divide this side by negative 2, and we're going to get x equal to a positive 10 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 5. And again, be careful with your signs here. All right, and this uh, is also a one-step equation, but there's a little, little trick to this one. So I need to undo the negative 1.5 times the x, so I'm going to divide by negative 1.5 and divide this side by negative 1.5. But of course the twist here is that whenever I divide or multiply by a negative number, I have to change the direction of the inequality. That's the key, that's really important. And I have a 4.5 divided by a negative 1.5, that's a positive divided by a negative, so my answer is going to be a negative And last but not least, uh, here I have variables on both sides of the equal sign, and I want to get them all on the same side. 
So if you remember, the one trick I've talked about is you want to undo the smaller of the two. So the smaller here, of course, that's an invisible 1x. So um, I need to subtract 1x from both sides. So a 1x minus a 1x is 0, goes away. That's what we wanted. So I'm left with 8 equal to uh, 3x minus x. That's not division here. Uh, I was just underlining. So I'm going to cross that out for a second. Um, 3x minus 1x, of course, is 2x. And that's a simple one-step equation after that, right? So I need to undo the 2 by division. Divide on that side as well. And we get x equal to 4. All right, so just a little warm-up, simplifying, and solving to get you started here. So let's take a look at the next problems. All right, these problems um, involve, they give you an expression that represents the area of a rectangle. And we know that when you have a rectangle, it has uh, a length and a width, and that you get the area by multiplying the length times the width. So these expressions if we can find two expressions that multiply to give this expression, then we can find a set that could possibly be the width and the length. Now, this says to factor to find one set of solutions, factor to find one set of possible dimensions of the rectangle. And why does it say factor? Well, the definition of factor is to take an expression or a number and write it as the product of two or more other numbers or expressions. So we're going to factor each one of these into the product of two pieces. And let's take a look at this first one. So I'm going to start with the numbers. I have 6, 18, and 24. I'm looking for the largest number that divides into all three of those. And that's going to be 6. 6 goes into 6 evenly, goes into 18 evenly, goes into negative uh, 24 evenly. So I can bring out a 6. Then I look to see among my variables, what do I have in common? Do I have an x and a z? I have a y and a z. Uh, let's see, x and a z, y and a z, and an x, y, and a z. The only variable that they all have in common is the z. So I can take that out. And then I'm going to write my parentheses. And I have to see what's left over when I pull this 6z out, when I factor this 6z out. And remember, I need to multiply the 6z times three different pieces that each give me my original. So 6z times what is going to give me 6xz? Well, 6 times 1 is 6 and I'm going to need an x in there so that when I multiply 6z times 61x, that's going to give me my 6xz. All right, so now I need to multiply something by 6z to get 18yz. Well, I'm going to multiply the 6 times 3 to get 18, and I need to multiply z times y to get zy, so that's going to be a y term in there. And this is a plus so this will be a plus as well. And then for the last one, I have really uh, 6 times what gives me negative 24. Well, that's going to be negative 4. And z times what gives me x, y, z. Well, I need the x and the y term in there. So 6z times negative 4 x, y is going to give me negative 24. Z x, y. Remember, if I have three terms when I factor, I'm going to have three terms in my parentheses. So let's clean this up a little bit. My final answer is going to be x in plus 3y minus 4xy in parentheses. And that means that I could have a rectangle with a width of 6x and a length of x plus 
3y minus 4 minus 4xc, or I'm sorry, 4xy. Because when I multiply these two together, I get that. All right, let's do the same thing for the second one. Trying to pull a number out that goes into 18, 27, and 45. Um, let's see, 6 goes into 18. Actually, 9 goes into 18, and 27, and 45. I think that's the best I'm going to do here. So let's start off with a 9. Let's take a look at my variables. I have RST, I have RS, I have another RS. So they all have an RS in common. So I can pull out uh, an R and an S. All right, so what's going to be left when I factor that 9RS out? Well, I know I need to multiply by a 2 to get the 18. And I need to multiply by a T to get the R, to get the RST in that first term. So 9 times 2 gives me 18. RS times T gives me my RST. All right, so now I need how many times will 9 go into 27? That's going to be a minus 3, because it's a negative 27. And um, I have RS, but there was only an RS in there, so um, there's nothing left. 9 RS times minus 3 is going to be minus 27 RS. And then the last one, 9 goes into 45, 5 times. Same thing, right? Um, I'm pulling the RS out. 9RS times 5 is going to be 45RS, and I'm kind of done. But I notice that inside the parentheses, I do have my three pieces, but two of them I can put together because they're just numbers. So I can clean this up a little bit, simplify this, and get, I have a minus 3 and a plus 5, which will simplify to plus 2. All right. Um, you know, there are other ways to get at this. I actually could have combined the minus 27 RS and the 45 RS first. So I only have two terms. That would have gotten us there as well. So there is more than one answer to some of these. But my answer is that the width could be 9 RS and the length could be 2T plus 2. As I look at it, let's see what we would get uh, if we did it the other way. Um, we would have, if I combine those terms, 18 RST minus 27 plus 45 would be 18, I believe. So plus 18. R S and wow this works out really nicely actually because I can pull out 18 R S and be left with T plus 1 does that work out? 18 R S times T gives me 18 R S T 18 R S times 1 gives me 18 R S so you could have also had a rectangle that looks like this, where one side is 18 R S. Oops, that's not coming out so well. Eh, let's try that again. Let's erase that. Let's erase the whole thing. Uh, let's do a better job of this. Make it a little bit smaller. So this side is 18 R. S and this side is T plus 1. So that's another possible answer to this question. All right, let's take a look at what's next. So this problem is about simplifying. So I need to start simplifying this and then see if the simplified version is among my uh, choices here. Okay, so um, hard to tell from the question if there's more than one answer. I'm not actually sure. But uh, I'm just going to start simplifying and see where, where we head up, end up with this. All right, so 
anytime I see parentheses, I'm going to try to distribute so I know that the 5 has to multiply by everything inside here. That's going to give me 5x and then 5 times 1.8 I know is 9 actually. Um, and I still have my 2.2x. Then I'm going to distribute this minus, so I'm going to have a, a minus x and a minus a negative 3.8. That's two negatives, so that gives me a plus 3.8. All right, so let's see. So far, that doesn't look like any of my answers below, so I can start to uh, combine some pieces. I'm noting that I have some x pieces that I can put together, and I have um, some numbers that I could put together potentially. And let's see. Um, well, I am looking at these answers. I want to look carefully. I see that what do we have here? I have a 9 and a 3.8. That's going to give me 12.8. So let's put those together. Okay, that's going to give me 12.8. I notice that I have a 12.8 in this answer here. I also have a 7.2x and a minus x. That's kind of weird. I still have two x's in this. But I also see that if I put the 5x and the 2.x together, that gives me a 7.2x. And I still have uh, this minus x. So here's a 7.2x, there's the 12.8, and there's the minus x. So this is definitely one of my answers. And I wonder if there's another one sitting around here. Um, let's see, this has a plus 3.8 in it. Uh, 1.2x would give me when I put the these two together, but I have a plus 9. This has a 1.8, so that's not right. Um, I want to check out this. This one might have some possibilities, but let's let's combine everything that we can combine. So if I have the 7.2x and the minus x, that's going to give me, uh, let's see, 7.2 minus the invisible 1x gives me 6.2x plus 12.8. And I see that I have a 2 out here, so I'm wondering if I can factor out a 2, if that will also give me the correct answer. So I know 2 times 3.1 will give me 6.2, and 2 times 6.4 will give me 12.8. All right, so this gives me that. This gives me that. So, um, looks like D is an answer as well. So it can't be B because I have a minus 3.8 here, and we knew that when we did this minus to minus, that gave us a plus, so that can't be right. And here they didn't, uh, sub they didn't distribute the 5 to the 1.8, so that can't be right. So it looks like it's C and D. So, um, you know, how can you show that the answers are equivalent to the original expression. There are a couple of ways of going about this. Um, you know, we kind of did it algebraically by um, simplifying this and combining some like terms in some clever ways. So if you show the work of your simplifying, you can use that as um, showing that your answers are equivalent. But you can also take a value of x 
and put it into the original equation and also put it into your answers and see if you get the same number. And let me just say that oftentimes I use x equals 0 because often that's a really easy number to work with. And you can see if you get the, the same thing. So let's quickly do that. If I put 0 into the original equation, I get 5 times 0 plus 1.8 plus 2.2 times 0 minus 0 minus 3.8. There's a lot going on here. So we have 5 times 1.8 plus 2.2 .2 times 0, oops, that's parentheses there, uh, so that goes away, and we have a minus, you know, 0 minus 3.8, of course, is a negative 3.8, but it's a minus, a minus, so that's going to be a plus 3.8, and this, of course, is 9 plus 3.8, so that gives us our 12.8. Um, when I put it into uh, answer C, 7.2 times 0 plus 12.12, 12, 12, uh, sorry, let's try that again, 12.8 minus 0, of course that goes away, that goes away, so we're left with 12.8, so answer C works. And then if you do the same thing for D, I get 2 times 3.1 times 0 plus 6.4. Okay, so 3.1 times 0 goes away. That's 0. So I'm left with 2 times 6.4. And guess what that equals? 12.8. So I just proved that these expressions are equivalent. All right, let's take a look at what's next. All right, so this is another simplifying problem. Um, so we're going to simplify this as much as possible. So let's just get started. I'm going to, of course, do some distributing here and here. All right, each of these two. So I still have my 1.9. And when I distribute the 3, I have plus 3x. And then 3 minus 2.4 is going to be a minus, I think, 7.2. And then I'm distributing this, this subtraction. So it's going to be a minus 6.1 minus a negative x minus a minus x, that's 2, so it's going to be a plus x. All right, so I have some things I can put together here, right? I have two terms that have x in it, and I have a bunch of numbers that I can put together. All right, so my x is, I have a 3x and a invisible 1x, so that gives me 4x. And then my numbers, let's see what we got here. Um, let's put these two together first. Minus 7.2 and minus 6.1 should be minus 13.3, I believe. And then when I put the positive 1.9 with the negative 13.3, that's going to give me minus 12.4 I think I'm doing that in my head let's see if I agree that that's correct um, actually I think it's minus 11.4 let's see no no I think that's right 12.4 Plus 1 is 13.4. No, no, it's 11. Yeah, let's... So let's erase that 2 and put a 1. I believe that's correct. 
So let's see if I add the 1, that's 12.4 plus the 9 is 13.3. Okay, I'm good with that. So there's my simplified version. So how do I know if it's the same? Again, let's let x equal uh, 0. And see if we get the same from the original. So I have 1.9 plus 3 times 0 minus 2.4 minus 6.1 minus 0. So that gives me 1.9 plus 3 times negative 2.4. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is just 6.1 inside here, so this is a minus uh, 6.1. So we need to do this multiplication here in the middle, 1.9, that's 3 times negative 2.4, so that's going to be negative 7.2 minus 6.1. And this is the same math we did above, that equals um, negative 11.4. All right, um, let's see. So let's put it in my simplified version. We have 4 times 0 minus 11.4. So that goes away. And of course, that's equal to minus 11.4. All right, so I believe um, they have, we have simplified uh, successfully. All right, uh, let's take a look at the next problem. So these next problems have an equal sign, which means we're going to solve them and figure out what x is. So our first step is always to uh, simplify as much as possible. So that's where we're going to start with this. Um, so I'm going to uh, do distributive property and distribute the 3 everything inside and let's see what we get so I have 3 times 2x is 6x and 3 times 5 is 15 and I still have my minus 4x equals x minus 3 still all right so I have on this left hand side a couple pieces that I can put together because they both have x's they're both like terms so I have a 6x and a minus 4x, which will combine to be 2x plus 15. And I still have my x minus 3 on this side. And we have variables on both sides. And we need to get the x's all to one side to, in order to solve this. And remember our rule of thumb is we, we move the smaller one. So this is an invisible 1x. So we're going to undo that first. So I'm going to subtract an x. Again, that negative goes with the 3, not the x. So I'm going to subtract the x on this side. I'm going to subtract the x on this side. And I put it under the 2x. It could go anywhere, but I can't subtract the x from the 15 because they're not like terms. So I just kind of put it under the piece that it makes sense to go under. And so I have 2x minus 1x gives me positive 1x plus 15. And of course, my x minus x becomes 0. I'm just left with negative 3. Now this becomes a nice simple problem because it's really not even two-step because I have no coefficient in front of the x except for the invisible 1. So I really just have to undo this 15. And I will add 15, I'm sorry, subtract 15 from both sides. And that gives me x, the 15s become 0. And I have a minus 3 and a minus 15 gives me a minus 18. And I'm done. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so again, I have some parentheses, so I need to distribute this subtraction. So left-hand side, 
stay set for the moment. The right hand side, we're going to have 8x, we're going to have a minus 3, subtracting that 3, and then subtracting this 7x. Once again, I notice I have two x terms on the right hand side that I can combine because they're like terms. I can't combine the 3. It does not have an x involved in it. So again, the left hand side is still just hanging in there while we simplify the right hand side. 8x minus 7x again gives me a positive 1x. I'm not going to write the 1. And I still have my minus 3. That hasn't gone anywhere. So I have variables on both sides. I need to get them all onto one side. And I move the smaller one, which once again is my invisible 1x. So I'm going to subtract that x on this side. I'm going to subtract the x on this side. So I'm going to have 5x minus 1x is 4x plus 9 this of course goes away because 1x minus x is 0 and I'm left with a minus 3. Now this is a two-step equation so I'm going to use my usual trick. I circle the number and the letter together that tells me what I do last. Not first but last. So that means I'm going to undo this plus 9 so I'll do a subtract 9 on both sides to make that work and I'm left with my 4x because this goes away and I have a minus 3 and a minus 9 that gives me a minus 12 and then I undo the 4 by dividing by 4 because this is a multiply divide by 4 on this side and I get x equals negative 12 divided by 4 I'm dividing a negative by a positive that gives me a negative answer and of course divided by 4 is 3. All right, let's keep this going. All right, let's read this problem and see what this is about. Um, Riley and Joe both solved the inequality 15 minus 4x is greater than 25. Joe says that x equal to negative 3 and 6 elevenths is a possible solution. Riley disagrees and she thinks that x equals negative 3 eighths is part of the solution set. Who is right? Are they both right? Well, the only way we can tell is to solve this inequality. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have 15, I'm going to rewrite it again. 15 minus 4x is greater than 25. And I'm going to predict that we're going to be changing the direction of my inequality because I have this negative 4x here. I know when I have a negative coefficient that during the solution process, I'm probably going to change the direction of this, but let's uh, see how that plays out. All right, so sorry about that. Um, so we're going to undo the 15 first. This is a normal two step equation, right? So I would circle that, which means I do that last. So let's do minus 15, minus 15. So that's negative 4x on that side. And 25 minus 15 is 10 on this side. Now I subtracted. You don't change it through subtraction. You only change it through division or multiplication. But here's what's going to happen, right? To undo this negative 4 times x, I have to undo that with a division. So I divide by negative 4, I divide by negative 4, and that's where things happen, right? These cancel out, so I'm left with x. I divided by a negative, so I have to change the direction. 10 divided by negative 4, well, I know it's going to be a negative number, and at least we could say 10 fourths, but let's uh, simplify that to negative 5 halves. And we could write it as a mixed number, as negative, 
um, let's see, five halves would be two and one half. And I'll just keep the x here. So that's the solution to the inequality. The question is, um, are Joe's uh, solution, does he think that falls in that range? And does Riley's solution fall in that range? Well, let's draw a number line. And I'm going to mark my negative 2 and a half. And it's less than 2 and a half, so I'm going to draw an open circle. And less than means I go to the left. I'm going to make it nice and thick here. So where does negative 3 and 6 elevenths fall under that? Is it to the left of this? Or is it to the right? Well, a negative 3 is going to be to the left. So um, Joe's solution does fall into the possible solutions, because anything below this is, is a good solution. So Joe's good, all right? So let's, let's put a big circle around Joe. He's good. All right, but what about Riley? Where is negative 3 eighths? Well, negative 3 eighths is going to be over here somewhere. It's going to be, you know, that's below negative 1. And negative 1 is to the left of negative 2 and 1 half. So Riley's solution is not good, right? So we can cross out Riley's, knowing that she's not correct. But Joe is correct. All right. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, next problem. So we have a couple more inequalities to solve, and these look like two-step inequalities, so we like those. We're good at those now. So let's take a look at the first one. Um, I'm going to circle the negative 5x, and know that I do that last. So I have to undo the minus 20 first with a plus 20, and we'll do that on both sides, of course. So it leaves me with negative 5x is greater than 15 plus 20 is 35. Then I have to undo the negative 5 times x, so I undo that with division. And undo this with division, or do the same thing on that side. But I divided by a negative, so that means I have to change the direction. So that's going to become this now. So these cancel. I'm left with my x. And 35 divided by negative 5 gives me a negative 7. All right, so let's put this on a number line. And I have x less than negative 7, so I'm going to put an open circle and draw my arrow to the left. So I need some numbers that fall in that blue arrow area. So I don't know. I'm going to keep it simple. How about um, negative 8 is to the left of negative 7? I don't know. Negative 9? Lots of things could be to the left. And then to the right uh, will be numbers that aren't solutions. So I don't know. Let's say negative 6. And how about 0? Lots of numbers here um, to the right of the number line, to the right of negative 7, that are not solutions. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Again, we have a two-step equation. I'm going to circle the number in the letter so I know I do that last. Undo the plus 6 with a minus 6 on both sides. 30 minus 6 is 24. And I bring down my symbol. I only have a negative 6x left because these go away, of course. And then I need to undo this negative 6 times x with division. So I divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. But I am dividing by a negative, so I change the direction of my inequality. Very important. 24 divided by negative 6 
that's a positive divided by a negative, so that's going to be a negative 4. Let's do a number line. I'm going to put a negative 4 in here. And uh, it's an open circle. And this reads, okay, x is less than negative 4. I always start talking with the variable. And I'm the, the pointy side points to the smaller, so this side is less than this side. So once again, I'm going to be going to the left on this particular solution. Okay, so for solutions, anything that's to the left of negative 4, so that could be negative 5, it could be negative 8, anything that's down in this blue arrow. But then to the right are non-solutions. So I could say negative 3, negative 1, anything that's to the right of negative 4. Any positive number, of course, is going to not be a solution, only numbers that are down here. All right, I think we have one problem left to go. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here we have a couple of word problems that we're going to have to translate into equations or inequalities and then uh, solve and then really talk about what the answer means in the context of the problem. So let's take a look at the first one. Um, let's undo that movement. The SGA is raising money to refurbish the gym, which will cost $20,000. They have 5000 and they are selling sponsored bricks for $125 each. What is the minimum number of bricks they need to sell? All right, so they have to make a minimum amount of money. That tells me we're probably dealing with an inequality. Let's uh, take a look at some numbers. We have 20,000 that has to be involved here. They have 5,000 to start, and they're going to be selling bricks and earning 125 for each. Uh, sponsored brick that they get. All right, so let's talk about how much money they have total. They are starting out um, with $5,000, and they're going to be adding to that 125 for each brick. I'm going to use a capital B because sometimes a little b looks like a 6. So we multiply because it's 125 each, right? Each always represents multiplication. So if it were one brick, it would cost 125. If it were two, it would be 250. If it were three, it would be 375, and so forth. And the gym uh, to refurbish is going to cost 2,000, 20,000. So we need to make at least $20,000. If we make 20000 that's good. If we make more, that's even better. Um, so this is what we're shooting for. All right, this is a two-step equation. So I circle my number and my letter that are together, which means I do that last. So let's undo the 5000 on both sides. This goes away, of course, becomes zero. I'm left with 125B. I bring down the inequality that stays the same. And 20,000 minus 5,000 is 15,000. Then I need to undo this 125 times B, so I do that by division. I divide on this side. I divide on this side, and on the left-hand side, I'm left with my B, my number of bricks. My inequality does not change because I divide by a positive number, and I just need to know what 15,000 divided by 125 is. And I'm not going to lie, I used my calculator for this, mm -hmm. um, and that turns out to be 120. So... 
Um, what would be a good sentence here? I'm going to use, I'm going to type this in here because it'll be easier, uh, neater to write. So I would say the SGA needs to sell 120 bricks to reach the goal of $20,000 to refurbish the gym. All right, does that make sense? I hope. So the SGA needs to sell 120 bricks to reach the goal of 20,000 uh, to refurbish the gym. And that's $20,000, I should say. I don't know if that's clear. Put a little dollar sign up there. All right. Let's take a look at the final problem. So Joshua got $75 Amazon gift card for his birthday. He has a $43.50 Minecraft Lego set in his cart that he's already going to buy and he would like to buy some figurines for $2.25 each what is the maximum number of figurines he can buy alright so again we've got some numbers we need to deal with um, he has $75 to spend on the gift card he's already spending $43.50 and he wants to um buy some figurines that are two twenty-five dollars each. So some key words here um, is buy. Whenever you buy something, you subtract that from the amount of money you have. Um, you know, he's bought the forty-three fifty, so that gets subtracted as well. So um, we know that the combination of what he buys has to be uh, less than or equal to Seventy-five dollars. He can he can use the full gift card. So let's write an expression or an equation to model this. So he's already spending forty-three fifty on the Lego set. We got that. And then he's also going to spend two twenty-five for each figurine. There's that word each again. Right. That means multiplication. So we're going to multiply 225 times F for each figurine. Again, that word each means multiply. And we know that this amount has to be less than or equal to 75. So the left-hand side is the total that we're spending. Okay. And the right-hand side is the amount that we can actually spend. So this is a two-step equation. Let's uh, start to solve it. All right, um, so we're going to use my usual trick. I'm going to circle the number and the letter. Uh, and that means I do that last. So that means I need to undo the 4350. So let's change the color here. Uh, minus 4350 from this side. Minus 4350 from this side. So that goes away. That becomes zero. So I'm left with two. 0.25F is less than or equal to. That doesn't change. It comes straight down. 75 minus 4350, I think, is um, 3150, if I'm doing that in my head correctly. Uh, 350 plus 150 is 5, and the 40, 30, 70, so that should be good. All right, now I have to undo this multiplication by dividing by 2.25 and dividing by 2.25. These are going to cancel, of course, leaving me with my F, my number of figurines. This comes straight down, doesn't change. And I have to divide 3150 by 225. And 
Again, I have to admit I used my calculator and I get 14. The numbers on the test, you know, will be uh, uh, easy to do by hand. They won't be uh, too messy, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's write a sentence for what this all means. I'll put this down here, okay. So, this means that uh, Jesse, not Jesse, where did I get that? Joshua, Joshua can buy 14 figurines and use up his gift card exactly. Oops, exactly. So that 14 took him exactly to 75, so he got, got kind of lucky there. All right. Let me make this a little smaller so it doesn't overlap everything. So there's a reasonably good sentence. Joshua can buy 14, 14 figurines, um, and along with the Lego set, will he'll spend exactly $75, which is what his gift card was worth. All right, that is all of the problems. So... Um, if you need any more explanation for these, you can find me, Mr. Rorison, at SOAR. And uh, next week, you can find Mr. Fitzpatrick at SOAR. All right. And uh, the test will be on day five, whichever day that ends up being for you.